Okay, so I'm doing some repairs on this Yamaha side-by-side. -side. Um, this is my son's side-by-side. -side. Um, we put this cage together a little while back. It's a uh, cage works kit. So it comes all laser cut and notched and bent and everything. Actually works really nice. Um, but what I'm doing is I built and added these tabs for the flags for the sand. And originally when he got these, these things are super strong and uh, there's no um, spring or anything. I mean, not that we uh, are affiliated in any way, but this is the company that made them. Um, I'm actually really impressed with these things. Um, he went through some trees and he came back from a ride and these things were sticking out like this and it did not hurt the whip in any way. It just bent these tabs. Um, I had to kind of bend them back up just to get the bolts out. But so this is uh, my original design. It's just a flat tab with one, with one gusset. Um, it's just not strong enough. Um, he ordered springs to go in here so that they'll be able to bend when you hit trees tree branches, but I'm still going to cut these off and redo them. You can see this one's all, just all mangled too. So I'm going to redesign these and show a couple little tricks um, that I've learned the hard way on uh, making stuff like this. It'll make more sense when, when I go to the computer. Okay, so here's the new tab. I basically I brought this point a little farther out. It used to end basically in line with the hole. So this line has been brought this way about a quarter inch. And then I mirrored it and added a gusset to the other side. So the main thing I wanted to show was these slits. Um, I'm bending these in the press brake, so I don't need the slits, you know, to make the bend easier or anything. But the slit is there so that these, the way these edges kind of taper away from the bend here and here, if these slits weren't here and you were to bend this in the press brake, you gotta imagine the die would be bearing, the, the lower die would be bearing here and about here. And so this angled away material is really not supported. And so if, if you were to bend this without these slits, you would get a weird, ugly kind of curled edge here and here. Um, and maybe I'll, I'll bend a piece of scrap in a way to try to show that when I do this. So anyway, I line these, uh, the length of this slit corresponds with the width of my bottom die. So basically perpendicular from here up, this is, this is where the die lines up. So that that way you have support 90 degrees up from the bend line to the, where, where the material is. As you can see over here, it wouldn't be 90 degrees up. It's it's coming out like this. And again, this is kind of hard to explain and hopefully it'll make more sense, but. So then once the part's bent, um, these slits just get welded up and ground smooth. So I've got this drawn up um, and then I go, then I bring it into my plasma table software and that sets up um, the tool pathing for the plasma cut. So this is where the machine's gonna start and run around. And uh, you know, same thing for the hole. So I'm gonna get these cut out and cleaned up and then I'll kind of show better what I'm talking about on the press brake with these slits. All right, so here's the parts cut. Got the two I'm gonna use with slots. And I went ahead and modified the drawing and I cut one without slots to show the difference that's going to happen when, when the, when these wings get bent up. So again, to show as this is sitting on the bottom die, the, I won't quite balance, but if you imagine going straight out from the end of those slots, that's where the material is going to be supported by the die. And so again, 
when I bend this, you'll see the you'll see the reason for that. So I'm gonna get this set up. I may actually use this narrower die, um, which makes things even better. This is really too narrow of a die. This is 10 gauge material. Um, but I'll probably do it anyway. Um, it just takes more force. Um, and it's a little harder with this die to get a full 90. Um, but we'll try it. Um, one thing, I, looking at this now, I should have made this lower slot a little deeper because this material is, is further up than perpendicular. And honestly, it's been a couple months since I made those tabs there. I don't remember which die I used. But this is basically the same part. It's just I added one more one more tab to it, or one more uh, little gusset. Well, I'll get the machine set up and uh, we'll see how it goes. Okay, so here's the first part. So you can see the bends are nice and crisp. Nothing weird going on. So what I'll do now is bend up this one that doesn't have any tabs or uh, slots. I don't have anything to indicate where to put the bend on this one without this. Cause I'm just kind of being, there's only two of these. I didn't set up any sort of a fixture or a backstop. Kind of hard to see this actually didn't bend too bad you can see how that kind of rolls outward this actually bent really nice uh the slots may not have been totally necessary on this part i did kind of cheat and use a narrower die than what than what you should for this thickness but you can kind of see it right there how this flares out I think it's kind of a, a big, weird, rounded thing right there. Whereas this one is, you know, that, that slot will be filled in with weld and then cleaned up. But that's the difference. Um, you really notice it on thicker materials too. And in all honesty, I may uh, I may cut a second one of these and just run these. So that's kind of a, uh, you know, you don't know until you know kind of deal. Sometimes you just got to build stuff and try it and see uh, see how it works. And so now I need to test fit, make sure that the uh, the fits good. Now I'm happy with the fit. Might do a little bit of cleanup on the inside of this to get it the angles downhill just a little, but. I don't know, it should be a lot stronger part. As you can see, the gusset extends past the hole, whereas this one kind of ends right at the center of the hole. So between having the longer gusset and a gusset on both sides. And these aren't the springs, but this will be mounted to a spring now on this tab. So, you know, when this gets hit by tree branches, it'll have give to it. So there's really not much else to show. I'm gonna get these cut off and all this cleaned up and then uh, get these new ones welded on.
Okay, so to show a difference, I bent that first part with two different dies, the lower dies. Um, so this was the first one with the little tight, narrow die. It's got a little flare there, but it actually bent really nice. And then this is a, um, a wider die that's technically the right die for um, 10 gauge. You can see how rounded it is near the ends. Just these kind of big, ugly flares. So this is the die. And you can see as the metal extends forward towards the camera, you know, as the, the, the top die pushes on it, this, this material here is not supported. And so uh, it wants to stay straight until it finally gets pulled around by the material over here. It's that way you end up with these ugly, these ugly flares. Versus this, this side, you know, that, that distance with the shorter die is just so much shorter. Um, so when I first designed the part with the slots, I didn't intend to bend it with this narrow die because I didn't think it would do a nice job, um, but it actually did. I mean, you can get away with, you know, non-optimal -op uh, widths on the die, but it's kind of a it's kind of a case by case thing. You just got to experiment. And being that this part is so short, um, the extra tonnage it takes, you know, is is nothing to worry about. So if you have different dies to play with, you can you can you know get different results and and if you don't have a narrow die, you know then then doing things like the slots um, comes in handy. So that's it. Um, hopefully this was helpful and uh, thanks for watching.